So the idea for the the spring reset sort of came from, you know, like the, the winter is so heavy and you feel like you're this sort of in your cocoon and um, you eat all your comfort foods and your life feels nice and slow. Um, there's less social activities and all of a sudden spring, that spring energy starts moving in. And I don't know about everyone else, but I know that I start to think, oh, you know, um, the sun's shining and maybe I want to catch up with some friends. And it's almost like you feel like you want to throw off all that heavy winter energy and start to bring on that new spring energy. And so we thought, you know, we, we, we've got a fantastic group of women who are all connected, who all offer something very different in their area of expertise. So we thought we'd get together and we'd share some of our expertise with you. Um, we also all have businesses, so it might be something that you may be interested in. But this is just about sharing our tips um, and really just building a community of people who want to know about wellness. So that's all we aim to accomplish tonight. So today we, or tonight, we're going to be talking about tips to refresh your wardrobe. Um, I'm going to share some nutrition tips. Tanya's going to share some exercise tips. And then we were going to have Carla talking about sleep, but now we've got um, Tanya's going to bring in some sleep tips. So we have the lovely Lucy with her trademark red lipstick. Um, Tanya, who is also a menopause expert, um, and I'll be presenting for Taste Success. So I was voted start just to, to start us off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about um, how do we, how you can use a meal plan to get your nutrition sorted. So I'm a dietitian by background. Um, I also train health coaches. And in my years of being a dietitian, about 25 years, you know, I, I've worked out that there's kind of a common theme when it comes to nutrition, and that is people often know what to do, but they struggle to put it into place. And so when spring, um, that sort of spring energy comes in, you start to feel a bit more like maybe I want some salads or, you know, maybe I want some fruit and, and it feels like um, you're ready to start new things, but even though we know what we should be doing, there's some obstacles that get in the way. Um, one is the five o'clock overwhelm. So I don't know whether anyone else has this, that 5 p.m. what's for dinner. Um, I hate that 5 p.m. what's for dinner personally. And um, I find that I cook the same meals. So it might be fried rice or it might be a roast chicken and a bag of kale slaw. Um, it might be steak and broccoli and it's always the same and my kids say that to me quite often you know oh my goodness mum you know hamburgers again so sometimes we can make um healthy choices but they're just limited and sometimes we just grab whatever's fast because um that's you know the best decision we can make at the time um so it might also be that we're busy you know when you're busy you you want to get it all done but you can sometimes find that you get to the end of the day and you've just run out of time or you've got school activities and you're running from one thing to the next. And so you just grab whatever is the quickest and it's not always the healthiest. So it might be Uber Eats or it might be um, sort of a, a, a takeaway meal. Oh, sorry. See, I told you I had issues. Um, now you might also have random fridgeitis. So I don't know anyone else has random fridgeitis, but it's when you open your fridge and you go, oh, how do I make a meal out of that and that and that? Mm, I can't. So I'm just going to have to run to the shops. So even if your fridge is full of wonderful, nutritious foods, there's something missing to actually fashion it into a meal. And when we're not eating well, you know, we can get on that energy roller coaster. So we can sort of grab meals on the go. Sometimes we rely on those really high carb choices because they're the fastest and they're readily available. You know, grabbing a sandwich is, is always easier or um, maybe a muffin to keep you going. And then you end up with this kind of sugar highs and lows and you end up with sugar cravings because you're just not giving yourself balanced meal options. And if you're a parent, you get parent guilt. So you'll think, 
I really should be doing better than this. I should be cooking in the kitchen just like this lady with her daughter. But no, I'm throwing a toasted sandwich at my children. Um, and so that kind of feeling like I know I should be doing better, but I'm not can really get to us. And when we live this busy life, you know, most of us are overscheduled. We're running between um, demands of family, demands of work. We're underfueled. Um, we might be surviving on coffee. And we know it's not sustainable and we want some more routine. And I think that's often where you find yourself um, when you're coming into a new season is like, I don't want to be how I've been before. I want a new beginning like that butterfly coming out of the um the cocoon so if you feel like you're a little bit stuck in a meal rut and maybe that the meals you're putting together don't have a great balance you know like my steak and broccoli every night there's kind of not a it's not bad but is it balanced hmm. Um, we're almost if maybe you're doing your last minute dash for ingredients or you're sick of thinking what's for dinner um, or you find that you are just so tired, all the good intentions fall away at the end of the day because you are just really can't be bothered and you just choose the easiest thing. So if that sounds like you, then a meal plan might be a really great option for you to help get your nutrition sorted. So meal plans can save time. So you're not running to the shops because you've already thought of what you're buying. You've already bought the ingredients. You might've even prepped the ingredients if you're super organized. And then you don't open up the fridge and there's some things at the back that you, when you did your shop and you got your random food ingredients for your fridgeitis, um, you thought, oh, I'll definitely cook all of those things. And you didn't. And then you pull them out and you've got wilting vegetables and you're throwing away a whole lot of um, what were healthy ingredients. When you're meal planning, it also makes it easy to stay on track with whatever your kind of nutrition goal is. So whether it's um, I want to eat more vegetables or I want to eat more plant-based or, um, you know, I just want to really make sure I'm getting the right foods to, to carry me through the day without the sugar crashes. If you've got a meal plan, then you know you can stick to it because you've actually thought ahead. You've got, you're making those proactive choices, not reactive choices. And you can also make sure that there's plenty of variety, that you're not giving your kids fried rice and hamburgers every day of the week. I know, I'm a dietitian. It's pretty hilarious, isn't it? So how do you create your own meal plan? When you're going to create your own meal plan, it's really simple. What I recommend that you do is you just brainstorm all of the recipes that you know that you make really well, that your family enjoys, so all the crowd pleasers, um, all the ones that you can kind of cook in that sort of 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and just write everything down on a big sheet of paper. So, um, you know, your fried rice and your hamburgers and your tacos and your steak and broccoli and um, ravioli and sauce, everything that you make that you know the family like. Get all of that out first. Um, and then also think about, okay, so what are some cheat meals that I can have? Like, is it roast chicken and salad? Um, is it, um, uh, there's some fantastic, you know, like ready meals that you can buy that are pretty nutritious. Is it one of those that I can have sort of sitting in the fridge and it's got a bit of a longer shelf life that I can call on if I need to? Or maybe it is having bread in the freezer and making some um, ham and cheese sandwiches for dinner. Like sometimes cheat meals are okay. Eggs and soldiers, um, we don't have to beat ourselves up over everything, but just knowing that if you have to, you've kind of got some pantry staples that you can throw together and make a nutritious meal, three bean mix, those sorts of things. And the objective that we're really working towards is to create something that's flexible so that you can eat what you feel like. Um, and the way to do that is to really kind of plan for maybe four nights that you would meal plan for. So the other nights, you know, maybe you will be grab grabbing takeaway or um, you will go past the roast chicken shop and, and grab a chicken. But as long as you've kind of got four meals sorted, you can start to feel that you're being more proactive with your meal choices. And then what you can do once you've got that list is you can open up your diary and you can look at what have I got in the weeks, in the week coming up. 
Um, you know, when am I going to need to put a slow cooker on in the morning because I just need to come home and eat in that little half an hour we've got before we've got to go off to sport. Um, it could be that um, you work out which which mornings you need to do your prep and you also work out what you need to pick up after school on the way home. And then once you've looked at the diary and you know what your commitments are, you can start to choose the meals that are going to fit into the different demands of your week. Put it all on a planner. And when you look at it on a planner, you can say, oh, wow, am I including enough vegetables? And then that gives you, because you've got the headspace, maybe you're doing it on the weekend when you do this planning, you can sort of look at your meals and you can say, right, oh, I could put some peas with that. And then I know that there's something green or, um, oh, I can, I can take that for lunch the next day. And so you can start to look at your meals from a more of a bird's eye view and you can start to work out what's missing and then ensure that everything's a bit more balanced. I do think having some backup meals that are in the freezer that you know, like maybe you've made spaghetti bolognese and you can just pull that out and look at it, are really, really smart options for busy families. And you know what? Sometimes you just need to start with one or two nights a week if you're not feeling confident. And just knowing that those two meals are there and ready to go um, can give you that peace of mind that you're making healthy choices on the nights when you might have been grabbing takeaway. The other thing that you need to do is decide the day that you're going to do this planning and decide the day that you're going to do your shopping. So get all your recipes out, write your shopping lists, um, and then say, right, I'm going to go shopping on a Sunday afternoon and do my big shop, make sure I've got all my prep, my um, ingredients and that they're prepped. Right. Oh, sorry. Now it does take organization to do that. So if the thought of having to look through your recipe books and um, come up with your own ideas feels a little bit hard and you think I'm not sure I can not be repetitive, um, then maybe something like a done for you meal plan is a good option. So there's a lot that you can find. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm the business development manager for Taste Success. So I'll be talking about Taste Success, but you can get done for your meal plans. And the really great thing about done for your meal plans is the thinking's been done for you. It's all laid out, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you know what you're having. It's all been decided for you. And so you can be proactive. Um, you can you don't get to five o'clock and think what's for dinner. You're like, I know what's for dinner. Tonight I'm having meatballs or tonight I'm having, um, you know, ravioli with pumpkin sauce. You have already thought ahead and that stress of what I'm making is completely gone. And then you already know that you, in your pockets of time, you can prep. The other thing I like about done for your meal plans is that you try new things. So we did HelloFresh for a while. And what I loved about that was that I was trying new things. I had these recipes. I was trying new cooking skills. Um, I was cooking rice from scratch. It was it was very, um, you know, it, it was good to try new things and get that confidence that oh, I didn't I didn't know that I could cook um, my own pasta sauce from scratch, for example. So you can learn new skills, and then along the way, you learn what works. Um, you learn how clever it is to do the slow cooker or how great it is to prep ahead of time. You learn about yourself and your patterns and your routines and you start to build those habits if you do that over a period of time. So maybe a four-week meal plan. What I don't like about meal plans is that life is too short to count almonds and there is a lot of meal plans out there where it's like, you know, 30 grams of this with 50 grams of that. And, and it can feel really stressful to measure everything out. And particularly if you're busy, you can think, I don't even have time to measure this out. This is really, really annoying. And so I think with meal plans as a dietitian, I've always disliked them um, because I thought, you know, people don't need to be told what to be to eat. They need to be taught principles and that's all good and well, but when you're busy, it is really nice to have someone say, this is what we're eating. And you're like, great, fantastic. I've shopped for it. I'm prepared. And I can, I can just 
go and work it out. And as long as you're observing what you're eating along the way and saying, wow, I didn't think I was going to like smoothies for breakfast, but I really do. Or it might be the other. You might say, uh, those smoothies don't work for me. I'm starving by 10 o'clock in the morning and I make bad choices. So the great thing about meal plans is learning from them and using them as a tool to add variety and to really understand what works for you. So I'm the um, business manager for Taste Success and Taste Success do done for you meal plans. Um, they're all about building sustainable change. So building your confidence, um, helping you to put changes in place that are going to last forever. So it's not going to be a, a white knuckling it to the finish line kind of meal plan. It's all about how you can make positive relationships with food. So there's no calorie counting, there's no shakes. It's just whole food meal plans um, where you, you know, there are recipes, but it's not, you know, <laughs> measured to the, the last millimeter. Um, and it's really about building that intuition around food and, um, and you find that when you eat really well, you don't have those sugar cravings. You don't get those energy up and downs. And they're all low in gluten. They're all low in refined sugar and dairy. And we know that um, a low gluten diet um, and a low sugar diet can also lead to reduced inflammation. The thing about Taste Success is it also comes with coaching support. So you get the meal plans, but you also get a coach. And we know that having someone to keep you accountable is often what leads to success. So they're all low cost. They're all practical. They're easy to prepare. Um, they're everything you can buy in the supermarket and they come with a health coach to take you on your way. And you can also look forward to, you know, sleeping better because you're eating better. You can look forward to less pain and inflammation um, less bloating, a happier gut because you're eating beautiful fibery foods um, and just improved energy because you're not getting that, you know, um, processed high carb diet. And it's really is the support that you get along the way that makes the difference. So there's a few different meal plans. Um, there's plant-based, there's a skin plan, a gut plan, and then there's a foundation and refresh plan that really just focus on getting those good healthy habits established. So if you want to know more about Taste Success, you can hop on the website. Um, you can um, look at the programs that are there. I think the email, you can contact us through the website and I'd love to chat to you if that's something that interests you, but you can also create your own meal plans. Um, so just, it's about finding what works for you. So that's it for me. I hope that's given you all some tips to um, get inspired about sorting out your nutrition. That was great, Sharon. Oh, good, Tanya. Who's next? Are you next, Tanya? Or I think we should have Tanya next and we should finish off with a... Yeah, it'd be uh, nice to finish off with some fashion. <laughs> 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 we'll get the boring stuff over and done with and we'll get to fashion, <laughs> which is what <laughs> I want to know about. <laughs> Um, I think there's Sarah's a question a there. Question. Yeah, there's a question there, yeah. Sharon. I'll just share my screen while you're answering. Yes, that. I absolutely, um, I absolutely do recommend frozen fruit and veg. I think frozen fruit and veg are fantastic. Um, and even like you know the people that that prep everything, like they're doing smoothies and they prep everything in a little snap lock bag and then have it in the freezer and then pull it out. Um, or you know you have your your chicken and everything ready and then you just pull it out and throw it in the slow cooker. I think all of those hacks are brilliant. And definitely frozen is as nutritious as fresh. Okay. Hmm. I um am I can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Yeah, it's not working though. It's not good. Um, it's not it's not clicking through. So let me up and down. Try your up and down buttons. Hmm. Lots of technical issues now. <laughs> just one sec. I'll just stop sharing my screen and just um, have a play. I'm not sharing my Is screen now, am I? No. no. Just one sec. Now we are hoping that we will run a few more of these. 
So um, every couple of weeks or once a month, we'll run just a wellness webinar. Um, so we've got, I think we've got your email addresses. We're not going to flog you with emails, um, but we'll just send you an alert when we're running some more webinars, if you'd like to join. Aha, uh -huh. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of technical issues this um, session. Okay, so thanks, Sharon. Um, so I will chat. Obviously, I am really passionate about menopause, health and wellness and fitness. I'm a health coach and have been a registered personal trainer for 30 years. Um, however, my talk today is going to be just kind of general, um, it will relate to everyone. I'll touch on some things relating to menopause, but it'll be general. And I'll try to bring a little bit more about sleep into it as well. So I think spring is such a wonderful chance to reassess and realign the way you move and think about fitness. Um, it's really is an opportunity. So the weather is improving. Uh, there's better conditions, the landscapes are much nicer, our days are longer, so we have more opportunities to move outdoors and natural light enhances not only our mood but also helps to um, reset our circadian rhythms and that helps us sleep better. And it also allows for more variety, so preventing plateaus and keeping movement, movement interesting. And I think that's a real key to um, making movement and exercise a lifetime thing. When we mix it up, then it doesn't get boring and <clears throat> it's not only good for our body, but it's also good for our mind, especially as we age. So there's a lot of research showing that um, stepping out of our comfort zone and doing different things really does help. And I'd just like to also point out here, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, with regards to menopause, in Chinese culture, menopause is actually known as um, second spring. And I think that's so appropriate for tonight. And I think it's such a nice name. It's so much nicer than menopause. So <laughs> very appropriate. Um, just a little bit about the difference between exercise and movement. So this is something I'm really passionate about. Exercise is all well and good. So exercise is more kind of the planned, structured, intentional movement that we might do and fit into our life. But then there's movement and that encompasses exercise, but it's so much more. So movement is about how we move in everyday life. And I really do think that this is where we gain the most benefits, the movement we do in everyday life. It's all very well and good to, you know, schedule three sessions at the gym or whatever a week. But if we're sitting on our bottoms working for the rest of the time or watching TV, then we're really not moving very much at all. So when we can incorporate movement throughout our day, we get so many more benefits. And when you look at people in the blue zones, people who live to um, <clears throat> over 100, they're moving a lot in everyday life. So it, it's really important to, I think, think that exercise is not really just what we do in an exercise class or at the gym. It's so much more. One thing I uh, think is the most important thing ever is finding out your why. So can I just check, actually, can you see my full screen there? Okay, great. So I can't see it. <laughs> um, working out your why is really, really important because this is what will help us hopefully create a lifelong um exercise regime or movement regime so for example my whys are that I discovered um, multi-day hiking in my late 40s and I want to be hiking hopefully into my 90s so it's really important that I maintain a really health and healthy and fit lifestyle so that I can do that my other why is that I want to be traveling really into my hopefully my 80s and 90s and sightsee on foot that's really important to me so I was away in New York a couple of months ago and I just think you see so much more of a city if you can do it on foot I think I ended up working it's the first time I've ever worn a watch actually when I've been away and I think I ended up walking 19 kilometers a day it averaged out to so um, that's one of my motivators so trying to think about what your motivators are for um, why you want to move more and maintain your health and wellness and fitness into um, as you age and in your life now. And the most important thing of all, I think, is um, 
with regards to, you know, if people ask me a lot, what's the best type of exercise I can do? And I can give you the most optimal exercise regime for your body, for your life right now, um, for a, a menopausal woman or wherever you are in your life stage. But the most important thing is that it brings you joy because I can give you this ideal program. And if it doesn't bring you joy, or if you don't enjoy it, you're never going to do it. So I always say that, it really does need to bring you joy. Uh, the caveat there is sometimes some exercise can be kind of hard and people complain about it a lot in the moment. So when I've run um, kind of boot camp classes, nearly all of the women would be complaining in the moment. But by the end, they'd be going, that was fantastic. I loved it. And they'd come back for 10 years. So <laughs> sometimes the joy is after the fact. Sometimes it's while you're actually doing the actual exercise itself. And just to note here that you really are unique. So if you are a menopausal woman, for example, you have decades and decades of not only genetics and culture, but also your lifestyle choices, um, your life circumstances, that you may have injuries, you may have medical conditions. Um, so that makes up who you are now. And therefore, what is right for your body may not be right for someone else. Uh, and it really is important to find um, your best exercise regime that fits into your lifestyle and fits with where you are at now um, with your with your body and your life. So, for example, I have an osteoarthritic toe joint, which causes me some issues. However, I don't let it stop me. I work around it and find what's best for me um, with that condition that I have. So with regards, however, to exercise, there are some optimal kinds of exercise that we can incorporate into our life, um, particularly for menopausal women. We really need to, any woman really, we really need to think about strength training because as we age, particularly when we go through the menopause transition, we lose a significant amount of bone density and muscle mass through that time. And, and in the five years after as well, we lose a, mag, a huge amount of bone density um, in the five years post-menopause. And then as we age, it continues. So strength training really is something if it is possible for your body and your life and, you know, you can find some little enjoyment out of it or afterwards. Strength training is something I would definitely recommend. Um, then there's HIIT training. So that's high intensity interval training. There's a bit of controversy about HIIT training at the moment. Um, I think where that comes in is that places like M45, for example, where you're doing HIIT training for like almost or 45 minutes flat out, it can create an awful lot of stress on your body. When we when we think about HIIT training for more this midlife kind of stage, it's more ideal to just be doing it for more, maybe 10 to 15 minutes max. So we get in there, we work really hard. So HIIT training, I haven't actually described that. It's where you may do an interval of, say, 30 seconds flat out and then a little bit of recovery and then 30 seconds again flood out. So we're working at a really high rate, but we need to think about it in a kind of a maybe shorter what kind of less in less length of a session than what we traditionally do. And that's where we do get the benefits. Um, and then it's plyometrics. So plyometrics is another thing that if you don't have any medical conditions that stop you doing plyometrics, then this is something that's really great for building bone density. Um, running is considered a form of plyometrics, but our body adapts to that really quickly because we're running in the same direction generally all of the time. So the ideal thing we can do is to do multi-directional plyometric movements. So that's jumping side to side, skipping, mixing it up a lot. So exercise itself, when we're exercising, we actually break muscle down and kind of damage our body a little bit and where we get gains is because our body is actually when in the recovery process it has to get stronger to withstand that so that's where we kind of get get the benefits so we have to think of damaging our body a tiny little bit just enough to then allow it to get stronger and grow and build more um, bone density and build more muscle and there's a whole lot of other forms of <clears throat> obviously formal exercise. And again, it's trying to find what works for you and what you enjoy. They're the three that I probably recommend if, if someone asked me specifically for midlife women. 
Then there's incidental movement. So this is my favourite type of movement ever. Um, it's the movement that you do when you're not really even thinking about it. And this is where I think we get the most benefits for um, long-term health and wellness. So just with regards to if you're sitting at a desk all day, just considering maybe getting a standing desk so you can sit and stand and move around a bit. If you can't, if you are in a spot where you can't do that, then setting an alarm and getting up and walking or stretching at intervals, say 20, 30 or even an hour, um, just mixing that up. Gardening is my very favourite form of incidental exercise. I have basically hand landscaped my entire garden over the years. I have pushed wheelbarrows, I have dug, I have moved rocks, I stand and chop and um, get choppled my, you know, like um, my standard trees. I find weeding quite therapeutic. You're moving your body in all different ways. Gardening is, I, I think, one of the best kinds of movement you can do. You're also outdoors, getting sunlight, getting vitamin D. And I actually also try to actually garden now barefoot. So I'm getting benefits of my body and my feet actually working as well. So um, gardening, I think, is, is one of the best things you can do. I also like to share with people and just to think about it. So I don't love cleaning. I don't love washing my car. And um, uh, however, when you think about things like this, or gar some, some people don't like gardening, but if you're getting someone else to do all of these things, you're actually paying someone else to exercise for you. So I hate to say it, but housework, vacuuming, for example, is really good exercise. Washing your car yourself is really good exercise. So just considering that, you know, maybe sometimes instead of sitting at the coffee shop while someone else is there doing the exercise and you're paying them to exercise um, and you're having a coffee, maybe consider that actually washing your car could not only save you some money, but also actually help you get fitter in everyday life. So just a little kind of thing to think about. I know that it's not everyone's ideal to do those kind of things. And then there's movement snacks. It's another way I think we can really, and it kind of goes a little bit with incidental exercise, we can really add a lot of movement into our life with movement snacks. So I often take my dog, Chili, for a walk just once around the block in the middle of the day. Um, and I might do that a few times just to break up when I'm sitting a lot. So they're just, it doesn't seem like a lot of people think, oh, you have to exercise for an hour to get any benefits or even half an hour, but you really don't. A whole lot of little five minute forms of exercise really do add up. Things like um, using stairs instead of um, escalators or lifts. And I always have a hoop here because um, hooping is one of my favourite things. It brings me joy. So I have a hoop and sometimes I'll just get up from my desk and hoop a little bit. It's really kind of one of my favourite things. I also use hooping as my warm up for my workouts in my garage gym before at the start of my workout and at the end. So just consider ways that, again, you can move more and create little bursts of movement. And this is a really time efficient way to get lots more exercise in your life as well. So if you don't have time for a whole gym workout, you can get a lot of exercise in your everyday life. And um, with this new season, I think it's a really great opportunity to think about doing something new. And as I said, there's so many benefits when we do step out of our comfort zone and try new things, particularly as we're aging. So it really does provide a lot of benefits for our mind and our body to be moving our body in different ways. And also, again, doing things that might scare us. So as I mentioned, I took up multi-day hiking in my late 40s. The same with surfing. I'd always wanted to surf. I thought I would look like an idiot. I do look like an idiot, but I surf now and I love it. And I, I don't get up very often, but I do occasionally. And it is the best feeling. Um, and paddle boarding is one of the things. I want to buy a paddle board this summer. Um, and start trying that. So consider something new. It really is a really great opportunity as the weather warms up to think about incorporating something new into your life. And then nature. So this is where I think I um, the little bit of sleep comes into, into it. So morning light is really important. I always consider that I prepare, start preparing for sleep when I wake up. So I always get outside and get morning light into my eyes. That helps us to reset our sleep-wake sleep circadian rhythm and will help at the end of the day when we're trying to go to sleep. If you can get another walk in as the sun's starting to set, that gives you a lot of benefits as well or some, some kind of movement in nature at the end of the day. That's really great. <clears throat> the other benefits of nature, I think I 
are really that are really good are that for example if you're walking on a treadmill there is no it's just the same there's no difference and your body adapts quite quickly when you're out in nature there's all different things there might be tree roots or there's uneven ground there's different surfaces so your body has to stabilize and adapt and your ankles move around a bit so you're getting strength in all different parts of your body so a simple walk outside compared to on a treadmill for example is a whole different thing you'll get a lot more benefits from being outdoors and there's also a lot of research showing that being outdoors in nature um, is really good for your mental health. So I just don't think there's any downside. And with spring, I think this is a great opportunity to consider exercising in nature. And then just quickly, I never underestimate the power of walking. This, I think, is one of the most important things we can do for our health. There's so many benefits, again, for both our body and mind. It's simple, easy, available. There's no downside. Something I always like to try to get across is to view movement not as an inconvenience, but as an opportunity. So often we kind of think, oh my God, I have to go and exercise. But when we try to reframe that and think of it as something that's positive, that's something that we're doing for ourselves and it's giving us energy and joy, then we can look at things in a whole different light. Just a little note here that it is really important to find balance. So sometimes I find that people, when it gets to spring, they get really excited. They go flat out at the gym for two weeks. They end up either burnt out or injured <clears throat> to fix purpose. So we're kind of looking at creating a lifestyle, not just this um, let's get ready for summer panic kind of thing. <laughs> so my challenge to you <clears throat> from today's talk is just a few things. To identify your why for why you want to move more. To think about ways that you can move more in everyday life, not just in an exercise um, class or something, and then to maybe try just one new activity in nature. And those three simple things can really make such a difference to um, your life and utilise this fabulous um, season. And just to finish off, I just... Um, this is just a little statement that I've come up with. So as the world outside begins to blossom with new life, so can our fitness routines. It's a season of renewal. And just as nature undergoes a transformation, we too can embark on a journey to rejuvenate our bodies and minds through movement. So thank you so much. Um, as Sharon's mentioned, I'm a health coach and personal trainer. I mainly work online one-on-one -on -one with postmenopausal women. My business is Beautiful Midlife. So if you just look at beautifulmidlife.com, you can find me. And I'm on Instagram at Tanya Dalton. And yeah, so have a think about how you're going to move this spring and how you're going to enhance your life through movement. So thanks, Sharon. I'll stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Tanya. I love that. Thanks. Yeah, I loved your, um, you know, it is an opportunity to move, you know, think of it as something we get to do, not something that we have to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we might have time for some quick questions at the end, but let's go with Lucy. Over to you, Lucy. Hi, everybody. It's lovely to, um, well, first of all, I just want to say I got so much out of both um Tanya and Sharon, your presentations tonight. It's a great reminder. I think just, yeah, healthy food, movement and exercise um, is, yeah, something that, you know, we just need to incorporate into life. Um, so no presentation from me tonight, ladies. I'm just going to talk to you. <laughs> so hopefully um, that's okay. But um, for those, I don't think I know any of you on this call. So just as by way of introduction, I'm a personal stylist and image consultant. Um, I work exclusively with, with women and I tend to work with women who are 35 plus. And I'm really all about building not just confidence through your style and your wardrobe, but actually using your style as a tool for self-discovery and, you know, to actually learn how you can really authentically uh, express yourself through what you wear. And I'm going to uh, talk to you about just three really simple things um, that you can do as we come into this uh, new season. So they're not difficult um, things to do, but they're just things that can really make a difference if you do actually go off and, you know, take action on, on perhaps a, at least one of these things. The first thing that I want to talk to you is about 
is actually taking a moment to reflect and taking that moment and giving yourself permission to reflect on the pieces that you currently have in your wardrobe right now. And so I'd love to ask you uh, whether you turn your microphones on and, and tell me or you put something in the chat, tell me who has got an item or items, plural, in their wardrobe that you don't wear or you haven't worn for a significant period of time. So either, or you can even just, um, you can even just use the reaction and do a bit of a, a thumbs up for me, ladies, who has got item or items in their wardrobe that you have not worn for a period of time? Yes. And this is probably really, yeah, Sean is saying definitely me, Romy. I did until recently. Oh, that's really great, Romy. Maybe I'm wondering if you, you did a bit of a clean out, which is really great. Um, I would say 99% of the ladies that I work with will have pieces um, in their wardrobes that they're not wearing. And so we're coming into a new season now, right? So this is a really, really nice um, moment to reflect. And as Romy just said, it was liberating. It is liberating, Romy, because it's like we're cleansing the mindset as well. We're not just cleansing pieces out. And I I really believe that a smaller wardrobe with really uh, thoughtful pieces in that wardrobe is so much easier to manage. And often the overwhelm comes from when we're opening up a wardrobe and, you know, I had a client last week who actually didn't, she couldn't even fit what she had in there. Like all the hangers were, you know, kind of all on top of each other. There simply wasn't any space. So I really uh, encourage you to reflect on the pieces that you've got in your wardrobe right now and have a think about, you know, are there pieces in there that don't resonate with who I am today? Are uh, there pieces in there that perhaps I'm holding on to because I think I'm I'm going to wear them one day or, you know, I'll get back into that dress, even though it's two or three sizes too small, there's going to be a day in the future and I'm going to be able to wear it. Um, all of those pieces, you know, often when they're hanging in there, it's actually not really good for our mindset. And so we're actually starting our day off um, not in a really, really positive space because there's often... Um, you know, there can be uh, emotions and, and thoughts and beliefs behind a lot of those items hanging there. So my first tip is around one, give yourself permission and space to reflect on what you've got in your wardrobe. And I would love if you go off and remove one, at least one piece after tonight, a piece that you know just isn't right for you. And um. I think like Romy said, you will find it liberating. And I do recommend, you know, doing a review of your wardrobe. Spring's a great time to do it, but also reviewing it again in six months because we change and we evolve uh, as, as people. And I've found, you know, I'm in my 40s. And as you, as women, as we go into our 40s and our 50s and, and you know, 60s, we change and we evolve. And so if we're regularly reviewing, reflecting um, and removing, you know, pieces from our wardrobe, um, that's giving our wardrobe a chance to evolve uh, with us. And obviously you're going to have some favorites and some staples and some beautiful investment pieces that are going to be there for, you know, three, five, even up to 10 years. But otherwise we do, you know, want to be able to just make sure that our wardrobe is keeping pace with, with us. So that's my first tip, new energy, bit of freshness, cleanse your wardrobe um, and cleanse the mindset. Um, the second thing that I want to talk uh, about now is to go off and treat yourself um, to something. So whether it's you go off and treat yourself to getting your hair done, uh, go and have a beautiful facial or, or a massage, you might go and get your nails done, uh, go and get your makeup done. Who, um, who here has ever gone and had, you know, like a makeup lesson 
you know, at one of the, um, you know, either at a store or, you, or you've actually had a makeup artist do it for you. Has any of the ladies here, you know, gone and had um, their makeup done or, or had a makeup artist help you? Tanya, yeah, too long ago. Um, this can be such a really easy thing to do. Like the feeling of when you go and have your makeup done or the feeling when you go and have your hair done it's you walk with a different energy, right? And so I think uh, sometimes we can just think of, of of style. It's just being, you know, the clothes and, and that's it. It's just kind of what we put on every day. But actually it it has a, a really big impact on, on the way that we feel inside. And so go and do something really simple like, going and you know having your your makeup done or um I'm just reading some of the comments Romy my makeup is still from the 90s so ladies like go to Sephora or go to Mecca where you can book in for a makeup appointment and it is redeemable on product so you get you get it for free right you literally get the lesson for free and I went and had one done just recently because I was like I've had the same look for so long I just want to, I just want to, I just want to know some fresh colors and some fresh look. I have my signature lipstick. I have a signature nail color, but I wanted some freshness. And you know what? I learned so many tips in one hour, different things as our skin ages, different makeup products. Makeup evolves at an incredibly fast rate, like an incredibly fast rate. The technology in skincare and makeup now is incredible. And so, you know, it can. this can be a really great way. If you're also someone who doesn't wear a lot of makeup, keep you, you know, go and get a facial, go and have a beautiful session of something to treat yourself because we're actually, you deserve it. You're worth it. And, you know, it's so easy to put ourselves on the back burner, but it will just, it 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 is about you know honoring yourself and showing up and just like prioritizing yourself because it isn't just about the clothes it it's about how you feel and when we prioritize ourselves we allow ourselves to bring our best selves you know to to everything that you do you walk with a different energy like i know when i have my hair done I'm like i am on fire walking down that street right you feel amazing so i really want to encourage you to go and you know take care of yourselves choose one of those things i've mentioned it might be a mini facial hair makeup uh, nails whatever it is for you that is going to add to your inner glow um, and help you step into spring um, with some energy. So that was tip number two. So tip number one, reflect. Tip number two um, is all about treating yourself. And tip number three is I want to talk to you about adding some color to your wardrobe. Um, I'm so, I can see Tanya laughing because she always wears black, bless her. Uh, but that's that's now become kind of part of your, your, your brand, Tanya. Um, but I'm all about color. Um, I, I, I do wear black because uh, it, it, it's one of my best colors, but I, I love, I love color. And, you know, when we go through winter, it's really easy to, you know, for us to kind of feel, you know, a bit nurtured and like, it's like a bit of a protection from the world, the blacks and the grays and the navies. It's really easy for us to wear those during winter. Plus, they're also in predominantly in the stores during that time. But one of the great things about spring is if you're going out into the stores now or you're having a look at what's coming through, um, spring is when we generally start to see a lot of new colours coming into the stores. So there's lots of greens out at the moment. Green has been a, a key colour for really the last, you know, sort of two, two years it's coming through again. There's lime greens, there's pale greens, there's sea foam greens, there's loads of greens. Um, there's lavender, there's purples, there's beautiful aqua blues, there's lemon in the store now. And so, you know, like um, Tanya was mentioning, you know, just about kind of uh, trying something new, I really do encourage you to try a different colour even if you're just going to the store and trying something on in a change room and you're not even, you know, purchasing it. But the thing is, um, colour has the biggest impact on your overall look. 
And it's the first thing people will notice and see on you. And it has, it is going to contribute to how healthy you look, how vibrant you look and so forth. And so we can often be a bit scared of color. A lot of women I speak to say, oh, I'm going to go for the black or the navy because that's, that, that, that's within, you know, what I kind of feel comfortable with. But, you know, when I, when I have uh, women come to my studio for, for a color analysis and when I put a color on them, not only does their face light up when it's the right color, but they, their mood changes because, you know, color, it doesn't, there's not just a physical change in the way that we look, there is a psychological impact and it really does impact in our mood. So I would also like to challenge everybody um, to go and try a new color by, you know, maybe one new color, or even if you're just trying it on um, in the change room. If it feels too difficult, uh, if color just feels like something like, oh, wow, like I'm just, you know, I'm not sure where to start. Um, and if you're, well, if you're Melbourne based or if you're, if you're based elsewhere, I do, I do color analysis. Um, and that's something that um, you can come and see me if you would like to do it, but it's something that works beautifully um, virtually as well. Um, and that gives you a palette of colors. So you don't have to worry about figuring out what colors suit you. Um, I will tell you exactly which ones to to go and purchase. Um, so uh, I'm just going to quickly do a quick recap of the three things that I shared tonight. And if anyone's got any questions about anything, um, please let me know. Um, so the first one um, is to do a bit of a reflect on the items that you do have in your wardrobe and try and remove at least one piece that, that isn't working for you. Number two was go and treat yourself. Go and treat yourself to, to something um, really lovely that's just for you. And number three is to add some colour um, to your wardrobe. It could even be a new scarf. You could even add colour through a nail polish or um, or a lipstick. It can be as something as, as simple as that or an accessory um, and take advantage of, of all the beautiful colours that, that are out now uh, in the stores. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with, with me, um, stylerises.com uh, or come and connect with me on LinkedIn.